Third game of the 1990 college lacrosse season saw the Orangemen back home in the Carrier Dome before a huge crowd of more than 18,000 fans. The attraction, the most famous team in all of college lacrosse, the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins University. In 1989, Syracuse defeated Johns Hopkins to win the national championship. Their lone loss going back to the beginning of 1989 had come against Johns Hopkins in a game down at Homewood Field in Baltimore. And Syracuse fans will point out that that game originally had been scheduled for the Carrier Dome, but because of a Bon Jovi concert, it had to be moved to Baltimore. So Syracuse finally had their chance to play Johns Hopkins at home in game three of the 1990 season. If you missed it the first time, sit back and enjoy now as Super Sports brings you Syracuse and Johns Hopkins. Syracuse coach Roy Simmons is bidding to become the first NCAA Division I lacrosse coach to win four national championships. The same can be said of his counterpart in this game, Don Zimmerman of Johns Hopkins. The two schools have won six of the last seven NCAA titles. In last year's championship game played at Maryland, Syracuse had a lead late in the contest. But Matt Panetta scored five goals against Syracuse in that championship game. He also had four in the opening game win against Syracuse, a one-point win down in Baltimore. When it wasn't the goal scoring of Matt Panetta against Syracuse, it was the play of Quint Kessinich in the Nets. In the championship game, he came up with 13 saves, showing why he was a first-team All-America. But late in the contest, Syracuse's other midfielder, not Paul or Gary Gate, but Rodney Dumpson, got the ball past Kessinich twice to give Syracuse a 13-12 lead. And in the closing seconds of the championship game of 1989, Matt Palom came up with a number of point-blank saves, including this one. As the ball rolled away from the Syracuse cage, the Orangemen knew time was expiring on Johns Hopkins, and Syracuse had won their second straight national championship. Super Sports, a production of Cook Cablevision of Syracuse, presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. Tonight in the Carrier Dome, it's the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins meeting the Orangemen of Syracuse. And hi again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolter. We know many Syracuse fans are disappointed about the basketball team's uh, departure from the NCAA tournament, but it didn't take very long, and they didn't have to travel very far to redirect their energies behind a Syracuse team. This is a Syracuse team that is going up against the most glorious name in the history of lacrosse. Hopkins has won something like 42 national titles. However, they lost last week at Rutgers, and they have not lost back-to-back -back games in this sport since 1982. I think that surprised the lacrosse world as much as it must have pleased the staff at Rutgers. Uh, if there's a revenge factor, Syracuse could be in for a long night because I don't think uh, Hopkins likes to lose. Well, did you chew off all your nails during the basketball tournament? Hope you have some left. Ten times these two schools played in the 80s, and five of those games were decided by one goal. It could be another very close game, especially if All-America Quint Kessinich in the Nets is as hot as he has been. Well, he's an excellent goalie, and uh, if he gets hot, it really could spell some trouble for Syracuse. They can't get frustrated because Kessnich will do that to you. He'll take your best shot and stop you. You've got to be patient with him. So uh, Syracuse has got a good goalkeeper against him. We saw Kessnich is not very big at 5'8", and that net is six feet high, so there's a lot of room to shoot for. Matt Panetta of Johns Hopkins scored nine goals against Syracuse in the two games last season. Yeah, they've, uh, they're real familiar with him, and he's an excellent athlete. And Panetta's a big kid, 6'2", 195, so whoever picks him up defensively is going to have a job for themselves tonight. And it'll be interesting if it's his former high school teammate, Pat McCabe, from Elmont. Well, they know each other very well, and if it is McCabe, it'll be a great matchup because McCabe's a first-team All-American defenseman. Now, you know the Syracuse story if you've been following Syracuse lacrosse. It's the Canadian connection, the Gates and Tom Arachick. But this game tonight could have added significance for Gary Gate. He needs only three more goals to become Syracuse's all-time goal-scoring leader. Well, I think you're right. Everybody knows about Gary Gate and his brother. I think he's going to get those three goals tonight. He's an excellent athlete, good size, and uh, I wouldn't bet against him on getting those three goals. Tom Corey, by the way, is the man who set the previous record. They've changed the rules in lacrosse this year. Those rules changes favor teams that like to run the ball up and down the field, and Syracuse certainly fits that bill. They do like to run, and uh, it'll be interesting. We may see Hopkins not slow the game down, but a little more pattern offensively, a little, little bit more of a uh, set-up offense than Syracuse runs. So face-offs there will be crucial. Can be a real key because whoever gets the face-off can really set the tempo of the game. All right, Dale, it is Syracuse and Johns Hopkins, two of the greatest names in college lacrosse meeting, and we'll have the opening face right after this.
Syracuse has lost only once in their last 32 college lacrosse games, and that was to this Johns Hopkins team in the opening game of the 1989 regular season, 14 to 13, down at Baltimore. Here's the attack for Johns Hopkins: Matt Panetta, Jay Clark, and Jeff Wills. The midfield: Greg Kelly, Adam Wright, Seth Tierney, Steve Vecchioni will be the face-off man. And defensively, Johns Hopkins with a late switch. Tom Sullivan, James D. Tommaso, and Nick Chivillo will be the defenders. Quint Kessenich is the goalie. The Orange men in white and the Blue Jays in blue jerseys with the black shorts getting set to meet here in the Carrier Dome. They played only once before here in the Dome in 1987, and Syracuse won that game 15-14. Syracuse on the attack will go with Jim Egan, Greg Burns, Tom Marachek. The midfield of the Gates and Rodney Dumpson. Kirk Pratt out to take the faceoff here. And the defense, McCabe Stratton and Holbrook with Matt Palem in the goal. Here we go in the Carrier Dome. Kirk Pratt and Steve Vecchioni on the face. Pratt is down and has the ball under his cross. And Gary Gate comes up with the first ground ball of the game. Gate racing it into the box with a hesitation move. Comes in, fires wide. Syracuse's Greg Burns playing it from behind. And now the Archman go to the setup offense. They rush Kirk Pratt off the field. Rodney Dumpson coming on. Meanwhile, it is Paul Gates shooting. Kessenich saving. And Kessenich pulling it down. The outlet to midfield. A little bit too far. Run down by Rodney Dumpson. And taken back by Syracuse. Here come the Archman again with Paul Gates. He gets a check from behind from James uh, McNeely. Ball to Gary. Gary spin move. Gary working in for the shot behind his back to Paul. Ball shot is wide and back to play. And there's Jim Egan. A little one four one. Four guys across in front of that crease and one guy back up and that was Egan who got the ball. Now Jim Egan begins his move from behind, and a quick shot, it's in. Quick stick goal by Greg Burns, it looks like. And Syracuse jumps to a 1-0 lead. There he is. That's Egan looking to feed. Burns, yes, Greg Burns makes a cut, goes up high over Kessinich. Excuse me, goal number one. So Burns indeed gets the goal, and the assist goes to Jim Egan for Greg Burns. That is his fourth goal of the year. He's only taken 17 shots. And the seventh goal he has had in his career against Johns Hopkins. Again, it's Pratt and Vecchioni. Hopkins has not had the ball yet. On the faceoff, it rolls back, and Syracuse initially had the ground ball. Now Hopkins picks it up. Here's Johns Hopkins. Big stick firing, and Matt Palem is down for the save against Brian Volker. Now the transition game of Syracuse again. This is Paul Gate. Now Rodney dumps it. Quickly, they come even with the crease. Now Burns will send to Egan behind. Egan feeding in front. Marachek reverses, bounces it in. The soft bouncing shot that went over Quint Kasinich. And it's 2-0 Syracuse. Both goals have come from the same spot right there. And you'll see that's Sullivan out on Marichek. He was a late addition on the starting team, and he just takes him out. Roll dodges inside, and he gets by Sullivan. And at that range, Dave, very difficult to stop Marichek. That is that in-between bounce, which is tough for a goalie. You get a perfect bounce, virtually perfect bounce on the carpet. There are a couple of seams uh, out front. But Syracuse now leading 2 to nothing, and Hopkins only has one shot. They've only had the ball in Syracuse's end one time. Cahey loses it. Volker slapping away with his stick. Syracuse on every loose ball so far. And now it is Hopkins coming away with it for the first time in their end of the field. Now moving it up across midfield. Syracuse pursuing an vicious check. This lodges the Hopkins player 31. That's Nick Chavillo, the defenseman. A clean check, and the ball goes back to the orange. Cahey will... Walk it in on the sideline. Syracuse two, Hopkins nothing, two minutes into the game. Dan Kay, who had a marvelous coast-to-coast -coast move last week against St. John's, fired that one way high. 
But the Orange will keep. They, they seem to be getting the jump, and then nobody's sliding over to help up when they get beat with a defensive with minis get beat. Syracuse has dominated the action here in the opening two and a half minutes of the game. This is Jim Egan, usually he works behind. Egan being checked by James D. Tommaso. Egan now to the near side. Ricky Kramer. Syracuse taking their time here. Kramer starts his dodge. Kramer comes off the screen, a little bounce pass. Egan on the gift to Burns. Playing him behind there is Clark. Just a one on one here. They're clearing out for him. Here comes Burns. He's showed greater strength this help. season. He's double team. He still has it. He comes in. And it's deflected wide. Kramer trying to run it down. He might have held on to that ball a little bit too long. He did a great job. Don't get me wrong. But somebody was open when they slid over to double team him. He might have gotten rid of it a little sooner, but you see what a what a good athlete he is and how well he held on to that ball. There's the slide. Slide comes over. That's Dolman. And that you see how strong he is as he beats Dolman and number nine. McNeely, number nine, the defender. Here comes Syracuse. They have maintained possession almost exclusively in the opening minutes. Now Hopkins gets it. I want to correct myself. That's DiTomaso, 41. Had a different number on my sheet. Now Syracuse not really applying much of a ride as Kessinich is out of the nets. He's going deep down to the right corner. It is played down there. And Hopkins, for the first time, works from behind. Hopkins, Seth Tierney handling it outside. Now Hopkins getting Adam Wright on the field, number 44. Here's the view that basically the goalie has, of course, at field level. Talking to Syracuse coaches, they said Hopkins has an exceptional midfield. They're very, very tough, and they were worried about them. Panetta sending it behind. There's the move being made by Wills. His shot is high, but it's played from the weak side. And that is a pass, and Syracuse will get possession. Nice job by Holbrook, 43, to slide over and get a stick up as Matt Palem also came over, and they got in front, but it will be a pass. Syracuse will clear the ball. Hopkins had it for a second, but McCabe, 29, has it on the far side. Syracuse two at uh, Johns Hopkins nothing. Here is Paul Gate giving it to brother Gary. And the return to Paul is a little bit behind him. It's going to roll right into the Hopkins bench. It's kind of unusual. You don't see that very often. Unforced error there gives another opportunity for Hopkins to get some momentum going. 10.43 left. First quarter. Again, Kessinich out of the net. 35-yard line. He goes deep down the right nice sideline once again. Hopkins trying to get into some kind of offense, but the ball is taken away by David Patane's long stick. And a long feed downfield as Syracuse quickly transitions up top to Greg Burns. Bouncing shot wide off of Egan. And Syracuse will keep it. Jim Egan sending it to Paul Gage just coming on and into the picture. Paul with a nifty move for the left-handed crank saved by Kessinich. And here is Kessinich coming right up the middle throwing to Di Tommaso. Di Tommaso is clear sailing. Nobody has picked him up. He scores. Nobody picked up James Di Tommaso. He went all the way. And it is a two-to-one game. That should pick up Hopkins. Nice job by Tommaso, 41. As you said, Dave, we'll see it here. Here's a shot and a nice save by Kessinich. Gets the rebound, looks out, comes up himself, looks to his left. There's his pal, Tommaso, 
and he keeps coming. Now what everybody's supposed to do is they're saying, somebody get in a hole, pick him up, play the zone anyway. Somebody just get a stick up on him, but he's able to go all the way, and Matt Palum can't stop the ball coming off that big stick. Syracuse gets the ball on the face. Kirk Pratt had it for a minute. As Pratt gives it up, he'll head toward the sideline, and Amidi will come on and replace him. Adi Tomaso, that was his first goal of the year, his first shot. Syracuse mishandling it, it keep it alive as they pop it in the air. Kessel gets fair game out of the nets. He is down, and he is up. He's down again, the net is open. Syracuse hacking at the ball. Marichek coming in behind the back. He wanted a trip. He wanted a trip. Don Zimmerman furious with the officials as Syracuse has jumped out now to a 3-1 to one lead. Well, he wanted a trip on that. And there's the feed from Egan. Way out, and the ball's down again. But watch what happens. Here's what he's looking for. Here's what Coach Zimmerman's looking for. Now, Kesnich has got it. That's Kehi slash. Well, he didn't slash him, but he tried to get him. Now, that was could have been a push, I guess. But here's the one he gets upset about. Not that one. Huh? I think he thought he tripped him there. I think they got the feet tangled. Yeah. Not once, but about three times on that uh, journey upfield by there's the, the, Quinn Kessinich. Look was, at this move by Marichek. Look, he was going to see him set himself up on that side of the goal because that's where a right-hander would take the shot. But a right-hander didn't take the shot. He took it left-handed from behind the head. He's right-handed, or he had, was set up for a right-handed shot, but flicked it from where a left-hander would take the shot. And that's goal number three. And while you look at that replay, the fans here in the Dome, as is their custom, they turn around and try to peer into the press box or into some of the private boxes to get the replay benefit here in the Dome. And they oohed and odd on that goal by Tom Marichek. Well, he really set him up on that. Kessinich did all he could. Really can't fault Kessinich. He was set up, and that switch from the right hand to behind the back went right between his legs. Three to one, Syracuse leads. On the face, Vecchione. Gil Martin, 44, is taking him down to the turf. Volker, six in pursuit, and he has it. Ball still down. Yard's been really pushing Hopkins around here in the first quarter. And Pat McCabe. That was Will, 16, who lost it out of bounds for Hopkins. And you're right, Dave, they are contesting every ground ball. They're really going after Hopkins. There's McCabe. With Gil Martin, 44. Gil Martin, 44, also there. And there's the other hit. And that ball last off of Hopkins, Syracuse clears. Gil Martin's a sophomore out of East Northport, Long Island. It's a new name, basically, for Syracuse fans. Oh. Big stick, throwing it wildly. And from behind, Burns on Kessinich. Hopkins fortunate to come away with it. Defensively, they get it to DiTomaso. Double teamed, and he dumps it across. This is Greg Kelly, 33. Gary Gate is on him. He gets a step on Gate, but he takes away the angle. From behind, Winship, 43. Uh, Holbrook, 43, that is. Low shot. Hopkins will keep it. Jeff Wills is back there. That's Panetta racing back to put it in play. There's the pick. Now McCabe has to switch. Here's a matchup. McCabe on Panetta, the former high school teammates. Marker is outside down as that hole. ball was outside of the box. 30, first man up for anybody. And that was on McCabe. He got a hold. He wanted a he wanted a ward, but it will remain. 30-second penalty. Man up. Watch Panetta. There's the move. Turns back. Now watch. Right there. Right there. The lock came up on the head. He held him. So man up opportunity. So Pat McCabe goes to the penalty box. Now Sheehan is on number seven for Hopkins. He is at the point. He's got it right now. Hopkins fires and scores. The goal there by Matt Morrissey, the extra attack man on. And the man up situation, three to two, Syracuse. Morrissey got the ball, and he's going to take the shot right there. There's the ball. He's going to take a left-handed shot. Stick side, Matt 
impale him, not able to control it. So a man up goal for Hopkins brings him back to within one, 3-2. Well, here we are midway through the first quarter, a one goal deficit. It wouldn't surprise me if we were talking about this midway through the fourth quarter, a one goal margin. Pratt. A lot of big sticks out there for Keeping that ball Hopkins. on the ground. Vecchio finally came away with it and Pratt stole it. Kirk Pratt heading upfield. He's being directed to the sideline to Egan. Greg Burns in front gave him the directions. Or a former high school teammate to James O. DeWitt and Burns was a quarterback. Here is Egan on the move against Deep Tommaso. Egan waiting for a cutter, switching back to the left hand. Marachek working to the left of the picture, now going out of it. Egan works one on one. Here comes Egan, saved by Kessinich. Loose ball out in front. Listen to that. Comes into the stick of Cahey. Nobody's back there. Hopkins ball. Well, that time Syracuse inverted and they sent Egan outside. Boy, they are really hustling. Ground ball. Syracuse 9 to 5 in that department. But that was a nice job by Kessinich to get out of the goal and get back there and be close when the ball went out of bounds. Now clear for Hopkins. There was nobody back there for Syracuse. I guess Kessinich could have even have stayed in the goal. Corso. Now, Frank Cordo is on now. Cordo. Little midfielder. I mean little. Now Panetta has it. Poke free from him. Syracuse playing the ball, but Panetta and friends uh, get it back. Hopkins regains, and then they lose again as Charlie Spino had to go off his step. You mentioned Cordo. They got him listed at 5'6", 136, Dave. You don't have to be big to play lacrosse, but that's awful small. Well, that's an exaggeration. I don't <laughs> think he's 5'6". <five>, <laughs> Tough ball out now to Palem on a clear. All right, Palem helping out on the clear. Gets it to McCabe. McCabe comes across. He's looking for someone to get the ball to. He wants to give it up and then get back on side. He loops it underhanded to Gary Gate. And Paul releases and comes across. Paul was Gary back. Will fake it to Paul, make his move, make his move. Behind the back, it's wide. But Syracuse will keep. You know, one thing those behind the back shots do are not just show both. They make the uh, goalie think all the time. Now, where am I going to stand? And anytime you get that goalie thinking and having to think a little bit more about what's going to happen, that's your advantage. Here's Jimmy Egan, played by Di Tommaso. He had a brother, John, who played here a while ago. Was he in the crease? I believe he was. He wanted to take the high hop shot. Well, Di Tommaso, good defense. And Egan, nice move. But there he is, watch the inside roll. The stick, Di Tommaso able to get the stick up on the end and just alter the shot. So a nice play by Di Tommaso. Three to two, Syracuse leads first quarter. Those saves by Quinn Kessinich reflect the pressure Syracuse has put on. Syracuse has 14 shots to six for Hopkins. Hopkins gets it to a cutter. But the ball is dislodged and they have to regroup in midfield. Sheehan now getting it to Wills. Back it goes to Sheehan, number seven. David Patay with a big stick guarding him. Onto the field again comes Spino, Charlie Spino, number four. Hopkins using a lot of different people in this game. Brian Luke catches on as well as Spino had Palin beat with a bounce shot, but it just went over everything. There's Matt Palin. Now Hopkins with Panetta handling it, looking to tie this game up. A pick from behind. Here is Panetta. Panetta against Holbrook. He's doubled. He still has it. Up top to Spino. Back it goes to Sheehan outside. Fake right and go left. The defense sliding appropriately. Spino with a fake. Spino and Matt Moore with a shot handled by Palin. Outlet now to Percy. Doesn't have any. He doesn't have any small sticks down there with him. Nice change of direction. Coming in the score. <laughs> Rob Percy using a smaller stick than we've been accustomed to seeing him play with, and getting the goal. Percy, usually a big stick mini, really didn't have much help. There was nobody with him. He was looking for some shorter sticks. People were in transition, and all of a sudden he just accelerated. Watch the move. That's Di Tommaso with him, but he beats Di Tommaso. 
And he also takes a nice shot by Lukash, who couldn't get him, and Kresnich, the last guy in line, couldn't stop it. You know, Dale, I had to check my scorecard. I wasn't sure that was Percy with a shorter stick. That was his first shot of the year, and he has a goal. It's 4 2 Syracuse. Hopkins, Bill Dwan, number 28. Seth Tierney now with it. Down to four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Syracuse leading four to two. Big crowd coming into the dome. And now they're actually working their way into the lower stands behind the net. That's no man's land. I wouldn't want to sit there. Crazy man's land. They'll move them. Here's Kelly. Shot. Flagged down. And a save by McCabe, who is in the cage. Well, the offside defenseman slides. And he did slide, made the save. There's a hole, meanwhile, out in front. But watch, watch 29 as he moves. Kelly is out front, going to take the shot. You'll see it Ricky right Kramer. now. Watch over him, and there's the off defenseman slides in. Was it Kramer? Kramer is the man who hurried right. that shot a little bit. And Kramer drew the penalty. Johns Hopkins, one now for the man one. Up. Yeah, they scored moments ago. Yep. This is Sheehan. Take Steve him right is on now, number 24. Huh. Great job. That was Stratton. Took that pass right in midair. And McCabe. Now it's Stratton again. He's nice in trouble. Up to Stratton. Stratton regains and loses. And Sheehan gets it with a head of steam. He headbands it ahead to Barr. Barr scores. Steve Barr beating Matt Caleb on the man up situation to Syracuse carelessly uh, mishandled the ball at midfield and it is a four to three game. Well Stratton did a great job but then he took the ball back out and he couldn't get any help and the result was a fast break off a ground ball and as you said Marr beats Matt Palum for goal number three and shot number ten for Hopkins. Scott Marr picks up a goal that is his second of the year in seven shots. The Hopkins goal by number 24, Scott Marr, it is Vecchione shoved off the ball. That'll be a violation against Syracuse. That's uh, against Hopkins. He must have been withholding the ball, or he called a ward. I'm not sure what he called. I didn't see it, but Syracuse has the ball. And who has it? Paul Gate on the far side. Yeah, they weren't sure who had it. Paul or Gary, the old hidden ball trick that you can't really do like they used to. <laughs> Here's Paul faking any kind of exchange with Gary. Paul working in one on one. He's triple, but he gets the spot. And quickly darting behind is Jim Egan to keep it in Syracuse's possession. They seem to be going fairly high on Kresnich. Well, he's only 5'8. Yep. Egan works it out from behind. Now here's Gary Gate coming in. And he was in the crease. He was thinking about going airborne. He's smiling as he comes up field. Now just makes you think a little bit. There's the pass from Egan. Guarded by Bill Dwan here. And Dwan loses him for a minute, gets the stick up, and it is a very, he was going air gate. He just got hit. Hopkins brings it across now as they look for the tying goal. They're down four to three. Two and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Scott Marr on the give to Panetta. Panetta's played by Holbrook. McCabe has Marr on the near side. Here's the one on one move, knocked away. Palum's out of the net. Good speed by Matt Palum down the sideline. Need some Tierney help. is with him. Palum out of bounds. And Hopkins will get it back. He's looking for a push. They're looking for a push. Matt says he got pushed on the back of the neck. Now that'll even him up for the one they had before. <laughs> Baracek defending. Against Wright, oh, Baracek right stolen away, away. Adam Wright gets it back, however. Meets resistance and gives it up. Need Tommaso the big stick against David Patain. Somebody got line. thrown to the turf. He was on the line, Syracuse ball. That was Scott Tierney who hit the deck. Lots of bodies. As they like to say, thrown around liberally. 
Down to a minute 50 to go in the first quarter. Very even game. In all statistical categories. Paul Gate. Big sticks. Oh, they're gonna have to get, oh, they're gonna have to let him go. Offside. It's gotta be. We get a call at the box for an offside. I thought he was off and open. Walt Munsey, the official there, makes the call. Well, that was Holbrook who started down with the ball, but nobody came back to keep the four men in the defensive half of the field, so that was lack of communication and a turnover. By the way, this is Johns Hopkins' second appearance in the Carrier Dome. They lost in 1987, 15-14. Here is Sheehan with the ball. Sheehan reversing. Now giving it up to a fresh mini, Lukacs. They feed it up top to Sheehan. He screenshot is wide to the right, but yeah. Hopkins will keep it. Palin really was screened. There was a lot of traffic in front of him on that shot. Oh, got beat. Yeah, they beat the defense, and they beat Matt Palin as Wills ties the game up at 4-4. Jeff Wills gets the goal. Wills held the ball. Watch. Watch the move. As he gets there, he beats the defense, and they double him, but he goes up in the air, and he beats Matt Palum. Stick side. Wills' his first goal of this game. And uh, on the season, goal number seven. He's the leading goal scorer, along with Jay Clark. Oh, Gary Gate just took that right away. Gate feeds Burns. In close, they come, and Egan is blocked by Kessinich. Loose ball in front. Egan goes down. So does Di Tommaso. Kessinich. He's only got four seconds. He got out of there. Yeah. Up ahead to Volker now in the final minute of this quarter. There was a whistle before. And what's the call? Matthew Matthew Substitution problem. Clock is on the field. Syracuse works across the goal mouth. Loose ball picked up by Paul Gate. He fakes the one-on-one -on -one move. Now he backs off, throws it top of the zone, and dumps it. Oh, that was, oh. Got the crossbar. Whoa. We haven't called Dumpson's name very often here in the first quarter. Dumps it again. Who's going to win this race to the out-of-bounds uh, mark? Syracuse. Syracuse keeps it. 15 seconds to go. That was a failure to advance the ball penalty that they called. That's why Syracuse got it. This crowd is growing in number even as the game continues. Fans now in the upper deck on both sides of the carrier dome. That's Volker right there defensively on Gate. He's in for the shot. He gets it in the net. <laughs> Gary Gate is so strong and he gets the goal with five seconds to go here in the first quarter. As he closes in on the all time Syracuse goal scoring mark. Watch what he does here. There's a move inside roll. Volker's beat. Di Tommaso slides, and he even goes backwards. He shot, got rid of the ball, going backwards. First goal of the game for Gary. He now needs only two more to eclipse Tom Corey's all-time mark. You see how strong he is. Di Tommaso slid over, and they knocked him backwards. He took the shot going backwards and put he it by question. And those feet anchored. Vecchioni coming out of there as the quarter comes to an end. That's the end of the first quarter here in the Carrier Dome with a score, Syracuse 5 and Johns Hopkins 4. Back in the Carrier Dome for the second quarter of what many feel is the game of the year in college lacrosse, at least until the Final Four, which will be played at Rutgers this year. It's even a little more important, I think, for Hopkins after that loss to Rutgers. As I said at the top of the show, it shocked the lacrosse world as much as it pleased Rutgers, but uh, they're not used to being down at this point of the season and losing to Rutgers. That takes nothing away from Rutgers or a good lacrosse team, but this game is doubly important now to that man and the Blue Jays. Roy Simmons. Like uh, Don Zimmerman. With three national championships 
since the NCAA went to that format. We checked the faceoff stat, by the way, as we said it was going to be important. It's 6 4 in favor of Syracuse at this point, as you look at Kasinich, but it has, every one has been close. And Pratt and Vecchioni contend again. Overrun by Paul Gate, taken yeah, out of there for the minute by Dwan. Paul Gate has it now. Four blue shirts on him, and finally they knock the ball free. Here comes Hopkins back. Jay Clark, number 19, on the move. He's a rangy attackman, number 19. Hopkins now getting into a settled offense. They trail it five to four. This is Panetta. Holbrook is marking him. Up top now. The move by Gary Kelly. Knocked the ball free from him. And the Syracuse D comes out of there. David Patain legging it upfield. He's got that big stick. He'll want to get rid of that. And he gives it to Gary Gate, who shows you he can play defense too as he stripped that ball. Now he goes to offense. Here he splits the uh -oh. D and he scores. Gary Gate makes it 6 4 Syracuse. And he's one away. He has tied Tom Corey to the all time goal scoring mark at 155. That was a pretty classic gate, too. That was Kelly 33 with him. And he gets beat there. And then they slide, excuse me, they slide over. And Wright picked him up, but he just so powerful, he goes right between him. And Kesenich does not want to have to see that too many times today when he comes down that quickly. And Syracuse again up by two. I am amazed at this crowd, Dale. They're now about halfway know, they're filling up, up the, the upper deck. <laughs> Unless they've all moved from behind us. Vecchioni on the face. Nice ground level look at it as Vecchioni will carry it across midfield, pursued by Ricky Kramer from behind, and they get to him, but the flag does fly. We're going to call a push. Bill Dwan with a late shot on Kramer, and then he apologized to Kramer. Technical foul. And there it is. The No, that's not it. Here it is. Right across right. the Adam's apple, right? Right, no, right there. There it is, right there. That's the push. You mean the Adam's apple was legal? Yes, come on. <laughs> well, those happen so fast you don't see them sometimes. I, the push was more obvious. Yeah, they should chalk those sticks, you know, so you could see where you've gotten hit every time. You'd have marks all over your body. Here is the man up situation. Hopkins is two for two. Yep, this is their third. Oh. They want to shift that ball around, make it move, but you can't give up a lot of. And a big oh, stick broke up that pass. play. Yeah. Syracuse trying to come up with a loose ball. Hard to double because you're down a man. Now you can't let him take too many steps. Save. Nice Handle job. with a save. Mike Doyle was on defensively that time for Syracuse in the man down situation. Cat and mouse for Matt Palin. Near sideline. See, they're a man down. They'll take their time. Holbrook with a nice clear to Stratton. And now Syracuse a man down. Now they're even. And now they're even. Got that ball in there. Nice way to nice, nice stop of that interception of that ball and then setting this up to get them out of the penalty box. Uncharacteristic check away from Gary Gate by Di Tommaso. He's a good defenseman. Gary gets it back. He beats the man. He still has it behind his back and in. And there is the record breaker. That goal now makes Gary Gates Syracuse University's all-time leading goal scorer. And I'm sure the announcement will be made to the crowd momentarily. I'll tell you, this is a great goal. Di Tommaso is an excellent defenseman. He goes over, he gets beat, he comes back, puts stick on stick, they slide over. Tremendous job by Gate. That's just unbelievable. And now a standing ovation for Gary Gate as the announcement has been made. Bonacci and company coming over to congratulate Gary Gate. A standing ovation from one of the largest lacrosse crowds the Dome has ever seen. And it is a three goal Syracuse lead. The Orangemen overran that loose ball. Pratt is contending for it. It's taken away by Volker with a big stick. He redirects it all the way down to Kessinich. Upfield he comes. Here come the Blue Jays. Deep Tommaso with it. 
He's handled the ball quite often on offense. Offsides. He just hopped in. Let's see if he's ticked with a call. 13 just stepped over. That's Tierney. Let's see if they got Syracuse ball. Tierney didn't come out of the box in time, and when he did, he wasn't on side, so, so they were offside. Don Zimmerman making his case on the sideline. Ricky Kramer has it for the Orange men. We're in the opening three minutes of the second quarter. Jimmy get controlling and reversing his field. The Tommaso is on him. Andy Boland now for the first time. Starts his dodge from way out. Spinning free with the left hand, getting it to Bonacci. Bonacci uh, pushed away from the ball. And a nice check by Syracuse by Boland. Bonacci keeps it on the ground. Kessinich sending it up to midfield. And it's played there nicely at midfield by McNeely. Now Hopkins trying to get some new subs in the game. They get the big sticks off. David Patain comes on along with 13. Tierney. There's the move being made by Kelly. His shot is wide, but Wills is closest to it. Matthew Kessel. Good look now. You see, uh, last year you could have an extra big stick defensively out there. It's a, it's a really big help. And not able to use that this year. That rule change, I think, really has affected uh, some defenses. Syracuse plays very, very tough defense, as does Hopkins. Adam Wright being uh, guarded by Patain, who gives him a little room. Now Boland comes out to pressure Tierney. We have the timeout taken by Johns Hopkins. John Hopkins. Zimmerman came flying off the bench. He wasn't happy with Adam Wright, number 44, and he's letting him hear about it right now. He wanted him to set up a play, and then when he didn't set the play that he wanted, he called a timeout, which was a smart timeout. He's got 10.54 left, and they want to get back into this game offensively, down 7-4. So a good timeout. So Syracuse is leading it by a score of 7-4 here early in the second quarter. Dave Cohen along at Dell Dry Pulcher. And here's something that'll be uh, coming your way this uh, summer from uh, Syracuse University's Summer Sessions. It is the first uh, Syracuse Sportscasting Academy in which uh, participants will have a chance to do television, radio, play by play, baseball, basketball, football. This is a Summer Sessions course uh, with Syracuse University. And if you'd like more information and a brochure, that's the number 315 443 5400. Here's a replay of Zimmerman and Adam Wright. Yeah, he's got that uh, index finger pointing to Temple, which is exemplary of think, think, don't make any mistakes now. We've got to do what we're told. We're in a tough game. When I tell you to run this play, I want you to run that play. Well, they've got some great thinkers at Johns Hopkins, a and tremendous they, academic institution. Now let's see what the Blue Jays have uh, cooked up here. Tierney 13. Now they go behind to Panetta. Wright will get it on the near side, 44. Wright played by Patani, rifles a shot. And Matt Palin with a great save there. Here comes McCabe, shoveling it to the far hash mark. Oh boy, what a play by McCabe. And Pat stays on side. I think they're trying to clear out and get a, a little clearer shot at Matt Palin. They got one off. He managed to save it. Couldn't control the bound, and Syracuse got it back. Oh, a rifle Paul. shot by Paul Gate. He had four goals in the championship against Kessinich, who's way out of the cage. Nice job by Hopkins. Kessinich, the goalie, Kessinich way down downfield there. with Panetta. Kessinich uh, still hasn't retreated. Now they give it to Kelly with the exaggerated step. He feeds Sheehan. Sheehan fakes. Ethan with a crease to Wills. Now Panetta and Sheehan. You know, Syracuse doing a great job defensively. Hopkins has been not able to get that fast break goal, and when they used to settle off on Syracuse, has really been very, very tough defensively. Luke Hatch has come on. Tierney has departed. Now Spino comes out of the box, gets the jump. He fires high and wide, played by Panetta. 
Panetta to Will. Now Lukacs. Up top he goes to Sheehan with Dubson on him. Oh. Saved by Palin. The ricochet out. Spino went for it. Gary Gates going to come up with it. Down the sideline. Gate behind the back. He got it before he was knocked out of bounds. Rolling toward the far corner. Jamie Archer in pursuit. And it goes out of bounds. And one of the things I was mentioning before, if you look at Hopkins, that goal by Di Tommaso was an unsettled situation. So we take away one. That's three goals. They've had man up. They really, they're settled offense, Dave. They've not really had a good opportunity to take many shots at Matt Palin. So let's check the save count here for Matt Palin. He has six. And Matt, by the way, will be our halftime guest, and he'll be demonstrating the art of uh, goaltending. So with the two man-up goals and that one unsettled, that's three. They've really only gotten one settled goal. Lukacs with a head of steam, fires and scores. Two. A screenshot. Palin saw it, but he couldn't stop it, and Lukacs scores to uh, end Syracuse's run of three unanswered goals. Lukacs down, left-handed, and he makes a move. And Matt Moore not able to get stick on him, and Palin down on his knees. Ball goes. In the cage, goal number five. So there's a settled goal for Hopkins. Nice move, and that's what they want. Now the faceoffs become more important again. Or ever important, perhaps. Withholding the ball from play. Syracuse ball, so that'll be a faceoff via the penalty. They'll take him any way they can get him. Faceoffs incidentally, that's seven for Syracuse and seven for Hopkins, so they're even up. Kehi. Kehi moving against uh, Volker. Kehi has excellent one on one capabilities. Now Ricky Kramer has it. Syracuse's uh, Jamie Archer has it now. Seeing his first action of the game. He was on just a few moments ago with Burns and Marachek. He's replaced Egan on the attack. Here comes Marachek. Marachek working his way in, shoveling behind. A flag is down. Syracuse will keep it as long as they have possession. Greg Burns goes one on one, and he beats Kessinich. Oh, they're going to get a, they're going to get a penalty out of that too. So that'll be a man up slash second goal. Watch the spectacular variety, however, as Burns, who's had good success against Hopkins, look, nobody picks him up. He saw that nobody picked him up, nobody slid over, so he just turned on the afterburner. And got it by Kessnich. Nice job by Burns. Goal number eight, I believe, against Hopkins. His second tonight. So he's had good success. As a matter of fact, I think they've more success than any other Syracuse player against Hopkins. 12 points, 14 points that would make for Burns. So and Syracuse well, as yeah. well. So Syracuse now have the man advantage, right? Well, they got to get the ball first. Well, they. But if they get watch, if Hopkins gets it in the box, the penalty will be over. So obviously this is an important ground ball. Gary Gates scoops it up. And here come the orange. Pratt will head off and Dumpson will come on. It's there they go. Obviously a minute penalty. The 32nd would have been nullified by the goal. So Syracuse has got their man up opportunity. This Rodney is the Dubson first. Gets it to Marichek. Behind to Egan who's back on. Gate rifles a pass. Goes by brother Paul. That's Burns, or Burns after. rather after it. It goes across midfield. It's played by Wills. Oh, nice Here job. he comes. He beat the defense. He feeds to the off wing and they score. Great man job. Down. Great job as Hopkins scores despite playing a man down. Wills and Panetta. Nice job by Hopkins. Really, ball was down. Now Burns couldn't get it. Ball taken over. And there's just the speed as he just streaks right toward the goal. Wills, and then he passes it the last minute over to the left wing. Syracuse can't slide. See, Palin was defending to the right side. He had his stick on the wrong side. He'll show us that at halftime, and he got caught. Well, when Panetta got the ball there to the left wing, it was hard to follow him, and Panetta, excellent shooter, got it by him. Syracuse, another faceoff. And another win by Kirk Pratt. Hopkins gets back-to-back -back goals, and they have cut the lead now to 8-6. to six. Pratt being dogged as he comes off field well, out they can't, of camera well, you See, the thing is, they can't leave until the other guy crosses the box. He was trying to sprint to the box and beat him. 
Here's one on one. Gary oh. Gate giving it up. Dumps Rodney it. dumps it. Shot is saved by Kessinich. Now Syracuse is Brooke Chase on number two. Another attack man. Di Tommaso giving it up at midfield. Ball carried across by uh, Dave Howland. Down to the six minute mark. Wills beats McCabe, but McCabe takes it away. And the shot is wide. That's the patented Pat McCabe. I'll let you beat me and take it away after. Move. Aren't many guys that can do it, but McCabe has done it time and again. And watch. There he goes up over the top. And we're back. And a score by Hopkins on Matt Panetta's quick turnaround shot just to the right side of the cage. It is now an 8 to 7 game. They are right back in, and Hopkins hustling, and Panetta looking very, very tough offensively. And Coach Zimmerman has to be pleased. Panetta picks up another. That is his second of the game. Panetta, who had nine against Syracuse in the game's last season. Balaam has six saves, 25 shots taken at him. No assist on that goal. New faceoff man this time for Johns Hopkins. It's Greg Kelly. Nice between the legs drop. Ball gate overran it. Popped in the air and pulled down by Kirk Pratt. Here comes Pratt changing directions well, giving it up to Brooke Chase. Pratt will stay on. The Smurfs are on now. As Bonacci has come on. Maracek in a crowd with a shot played by Kessinich, who didn't even have to move his stick. Lost, however, by Dwan. It's off of Hopkins. It's not out yet. Now it is, and a late hit. I think Kessinich has found his, I think Kessinich has found his uh, his groove now. I think he feels a little bit more confident, and you know that helps when you take a shot right on him like Maracek did, and he made a nice save, and he says, hey. These guys aren't so tough. Get right back into it. Benacci, Chase, Bolin, Kramer. Egan looks like a giant with those guys. Yeah. This is Ricky Kramer. 520 to go in the first half. Syracuse eight. John Topkin seven. Here is Egan. He gets the pick set by Chase. And Tommaso guards him. Andy Bowling gets instructions hey. from John Desco. Yeah. John Desco gave him a little hint is what he wants done there. Now Kramer will start his move. Against Volker. Kramer going to the left hand off the screen. Double. Reversing back to the right. Plung the stick. Giving it up to Bolin. Bolin complained he got hit on the head and Syracuse takes a timeout. Period. Nice job defensively by Dwan, 28. As he got the stick up there, you hang those sticks out, those guys will take them right out of your hands, and Dwan able to cause a ground ball. Syracuse got it back and called a timeout with 4.47 left. Our halftime activities, the Coors halftime highlights, and more than a talk, really, with Matt Palin will give us a demonstration on the art of goaltending, and I'm amazed at the scarcity of equipment that the goalies wear or do not wear. There isn't much. Well, they can wear a lot more, but they, they don't like to do that because in the game, you, you can't just stop the ball anymore. you got to be able to go out and move. You've seen Kessinich and Palin end up across the midfield line, Dave. So if you've got a lot of heavy equipment on, it just weighs you down, so they don't like to wear it. I think if some of my friends who are baseball catchers saw how little these guys wore, right. they'd shake their heads. Yeah, when the game first started, people used to wear a lot of uh, equipment like uh, catchers uh, type stuff and those shin guards, but it's evolved into uh, the point where the equipment's light and they don't like to wear much of it at all. Dale, look at the crowd. They've spooled around the lower deck, even to the corners here of the dome. Great game. We may have a record crowd for a regular season game. What an atmosphere, too. Eight to seven, Syracuse has not been behind in this game. They had a three goal lead there, and that evaporated. And Panetta, a couple of quick goals for Hopkins, put a little pressure on Syracuse, and right now, the pressure's back on Hopkins. Syracuse playing this one very deliberately from behind with Gary Gate. Now to Egan. 
Normally it's Egan who's back there. Egan rifling it to Rodney Dumpson, who has terrific speed. Now Burns. Egan. Gate is back there with him. They're really playing Gate tightly. Volker is guarding Gary Gate. You got a stick right on him. Gary already has three goals here in the first half. Egan sending it to Dumpson. Rodney, a couple of moves. Oh. Fires. Kessinich knocked it down, loose in front. Burns is in there swatting at it. It comes way out. Gate is on one side of midfield, but Syracuse lets it go through. Face them. off if they nobody knows. If they can't make a call, it'll be a face off. Push. Ah, that'll solve things. They call a push. Nobody knew who the who sticked the ball was off. It would have been a face off, but there was a no possession penalty called. Push. It happened at the midfield line. So, <laughs> excuse me. Syracuse will get it back. Bill Ellis, the official there, made that call. Here comes Gary Gate. Huh. Extremely tough one on one. Volker on him. Changing directions, backing down low, backing in, firing. Kessinich saves. Here he comes. Fast break. Kessinich with Dumpson between him and McNeely. Kessinich gets it back. Will he unload his shot? Kessinich gives it up and goes down. They send it back across, and that was broken up by Egan. Now Dwan sending it to McNeely. Jamie McNeely. Gets rid of it as he was about to be checked out of bounds. Dribbles, beats McCabe. He gives it up to the off wing, and there's the score that ties the game. Nice job. Jay Clark gets the tying goal. It is 8-8. Johns Hopkins is tied Syracuse. They did a great job of setting that up. First guy that set it up is Kessinich, who sprinted out of that goal. He saw that open green, and he took off. Then he got the ball down, and Wills makes a pass at the last minute. After everybody shifted to him and Clark, nice hard shot. Hopkins has scored on four of their last five shots. So Syracuse now finds themselves eight to eight and losing, Dave, I think some momentum. And a whole bunch of those goals have come from precisely that spot to the right of Matt Palum. That's right. That That's one was the stick just, side. Kessinich was just uh, phenomenal on the sprint. And now they've got Bonacci coming in. Kay, he has it. Bonacci comes on as Pratt leaves. Bonacci being called back to the bench. And a score while that was going on by Dan Cahey. So the tie game is uh, short lived in terms of Hopkins and Syracuse back on top now at 9 8. Well, that's Volker. Volker trying to get a little hold on him. And uh, <laughs> so Volker gets a push from Cahey. And. Uh, he turns inside, or excuse me, Chip turns outside on a roll, and he gets it by Kessinich. So, as you said, Dave, that tie short-lived, 255 left, one goal lead. Third goal of the year by Dan Cahey. Get some production out of your second midfield. Under three minutes to go, the ball squirts out. Bolin, first to it, but it's taken away by Dwan of Hopkins. Stick checked away from stack. him. He knocks it ahead to... 24 there is a Scott Marr. Marr scored a goal earlier. He's played by KE. The middies have to play a lot more two-way this year with the new rules changes. And they got to play with a short stick except for one guy. Lots of movement back there. KE playing two guys at once. Syracuse almost it. decided to double on the ball. Speedo comes on. He has the step. On Persing, Speedo gets the pass. Speedo is double teamed, separated. Patain up to Marachek. Tom Marachek with Gary Gate trailing him. Marachek fakes. Marachek gives it up to Gary. Here he comes. Oh! Unbelievable inside pipe. Persing will send behind to Egan. In close, stuff shot attempt. And we may have Marichek in the crease. What they call here? Is there a call? Okay, yeah, that was the call. Let's take a look at. I'm not so sure this shot did not go in and come out. I, you know, they're real hard to call. Let's see. There's the. He sees he gets doubled. He just scoops it over to Gary. Gary's going to take a hard left hand shot. And let's see. It's got to break that imaginary plane. Oh boy, you don't get much closer than that. 
Uh, he wouldn't want that one anyway. If they don't ruffle the net. Dive attempt in close by Panetta. 9 8 Syracuse as the Orange went transition with a minute and a half to go. Big, Big stick. stick has it. Yeah. That's Fatane. He's being held. Egan has it now. Oh, and then they got to try to get it in there. This is a free situation in. for Syracuse. Yep. They don't want to waste it. Want to tie Egan up. feeding it on the ground. And when the ball hit the ground, the play stops. I guess you can't make a bounce pass. Huh. No, you can't lose the ball out of your stick. 30 seconds. There's the the ball down. That was Patain with a big stick. And that was Sheehan on him, and Sheehan seven is going to pick up the hold. Syracuse's third man up opportunity. Second. Check that. They're zero for one. Here comes Gate. Amazing how we can hold on to that ball. Well, they double teamed him inside and outside. Gary was in and Paul was out. Clock is on the field. There's a penalty clock being held by Kyle Federley. Again, they take away Gary's uh, jump attempt. Syracuse takes timeout. With 41 seconds to go in the half. They want to check the amount of time remaining on the penalty. Syracuse has taken 31 shots now, 23 for Hopkins. Hopkins has been very productive in the second quarter. Don't forget again, coming up at halftime, Matt Palum on what it takes to be a goalie of this level. By the way, Jerry DiLorenzo left the team, I guess, prior to the St. John's game, and so the backup goalie is Lee Hine. Which puts Syracuse in a, of course, everybody thinks ahead to next year, puts them in a tough position. But uh, they're out looking right now, as you can well imagine. Well, we can't see from our vantage point how many people are seated in the upper deck above us. But that camera angle lets you know that there's quite a few up there because they're seated on both sides of the deck in yeah. the upper deck. Jeez, when they had 9,000 here for the North Carolina game, they've got to have up 10 or 11,000. Uh, I think you're being a little kind, Dale. Am I? Probably uh, over 15. That's my guess. All right. That's the side away from us. And they love Syracuse lacrosse. Well, I'll tell you, how many schools in the country could suffer the disappointment of having your basketball team exit the NCAA and in less than 24 hours immediately shift your attention to another Potential yeah. championship team. Right, and, and it could be said for football too. It just uh, keeps on going. Right now, Syracuse still man up. I believe. They give it to Gary Gate with nope, half a minute not. to go. Is this a clear out? No, they're all even. Here comes Gary. Lost it. Back in again. Gets it down to Paul. This is where he uh, scored a couple of years ago in the championship game against Pennsylvania. Remember that? He rifles it by. Syracuse keeps it. 12 seconds to go. Whoa. Putting some pressure. Well, on. How many buzzer beaters have we seen so far this year in the NCAA basketball tournament? Here's a chance to see it in lacrosse. Gary Gate just drops Volker to the turf. Gate behind the back. It's in. Oh, boy. Listen to the crowd. Kessinich, I don't think, ever suspected that shot coming from that angle. Well, he can take him from wherever. That's Volker on him, and Volker is really putting the aluminum to him. He's, then he falls down. Then they slide over, and they get another stick, and then another stick, and he's, meanwhile, the, the shot's gone, and Kessinich, Dave, did not even have a chance to really get a chance to react to it. He didn't even see that ball until it was uh, coming back out of the net. Four goals for Gary Gate, a little bit of breathing room here, and yes, another buzzer beater. That's going to do it. The end of the first half. And if you joined us late, stick around for the Coors halftime highlights that will be coming your way. First, though, a talk with Matt Palo, Syracuse goalie, right after these words.
Welcome back to halftime of the Syracuse Johns Hopkins game. Our guest at halftime is Syracuse goalie Matt Palem. And Matt, I'm always amazed that the goaltenders in lacrosse have so little equipment. I mean, this is basically it, a little modified chest protector. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, you know, if, as you get a little older, you tend to shed some of the pads, the shin guards and the thigh pads and all that, and you tend to rely on your stick a little more. And the stick's awfully big. You so. mean when you're younger and starting out lacrosse, you can wear shin guards? Yeah, you can, like and you catcher? still can. But in the college game, I find it, you know, they hamper me out of the cage, and uh -huh. that's a big part of my game, so I like to be as fast no as I can. No added protection on the arms at all? No. Now, this ball is pretty hard. I mean, <laughs> this is almost like a baseball. It must hurt when it hits you in the shins. Well, just in practice, but in games, uh -huh. it doesn't really hurt. How often do you get hit during a game besides in the padded area? I would say probably almost half your saves to a third of your saves you, you are really? hit on your flesh somewhere, yeah. Man. <laughs> now, we often talk about the goal being 36 square feet, and as you can see, I'm about 6 feet, and I can just pass right under yeah. it. So it's a bigger area than it appears on television. Yes, uh, it, it's a scoring game, a high scoring game, and part of being a goalie is knowing that you're going to get scored on, and it is an awfully big goal. All right, I have no equipment, so I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> you don't need your helmet for this little demonstration, but okay. we're going to have uh, Andy Boland take a couple of shots sure. at you. Why don't you tell us about the, the most difficult shots, and just show us how you defend the different areas of the goal. Um, well, Andy's right in the middle of the cage, and I'm a right-hander, so my strength is to my stick side. So as opposed to standing in the middle of the cage, I'm, if I stand here, I'm giving him some here and some there. What I like to do, and what a lot of goalies do, I'll shade a little more to my weak side, give him my stick side, almost try to dictate where he's going to shoot. That's another good point. You know, if I'm here, I don't know if he's going to shoot here or here, but if I shade over to the left a little bit, I pretty much know he's going to shoot over here because it looks pretty appealing to him. He sees more cage, and that's the easier save for me. So you're trying to force him to commit. One you try to other. dictate where you want the guy to shoot. So the, the biggest thing in making a save, your first your stance, just like any other athletic stance, you want to bend at your knees and, and not at your hips. You want to be kind of like this and keep your hands away from your body. And Andy will shoot one high to the stick side, and you see my feet move. You always step with the foot closest to the shot. He'll shoot one a little lower this side. Right foot. Follow with the left. Okay? Bounce shot. Stick side. Okay? Notice my head is down. I'm looking at the ball the whole time. I'm not like this. My head is down. So that way, if it hits my chest, it'll drop right here in front of me. Now, some shooters, even though you give them this side, they'll still try to beat you to your weak side because it is the tougher save. So I'm going to do just the opposite as he shoots high over here. I leave with my left foot, follow with my right. Now the toughest shot to defend is right around the hip area. Okay, that's a much more unnatural thing to do. This is kind of easy and down here is easy, but this kind of jams you. Now a bounce shot over here. See again, my head is down. I got my hands away from my body. I'm not getting caught up like this. My hands are out. I'm able to make the save. What's the toughest bounce shot here in the dome? Uh, the dome right in front of the cage has got this funny seam. You can see that. And a lot of times it gets caught in there and there's soft spots for where pole vaulting things are and you can take some funny hops here. Sure beats the mud in the grass though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is better than the mud. <laughs> Let's take a little walk around to the back of the cage because during the course of the game, oftentimes we'll pick up the goalies barking on our microphone. So uh -huh. you're in the cage. Okay. What are, what are the things that you're yelling out back here? What I'm doing is telling all my defensemen where the ball is so they know if you're guarding somebody on the crease, if I'm guarding Andy and I'm, say, I'm in the goal and I say, ball's back right. We, this is front right, this is right side, that's back right. Now if I'm a defenseman and I'm not looking at the ball, I know the ball's here so I keep myself between the man and the ball. If I say back left, which means the ball's over there, now the defenseman knows to open up this way. So I'm constantly just saying where the ball is and calling out picks for a defenseman behind the cage. Do you ever say anything else besides the directions? Very subtle. Once in a while, if I know that there's, if I hear a lot of footsteps, a lot of cutting, I'll say, watch cutters, cutters. And the most important call actually a goalie can make is the check call as the feed comes there. If I'm guarding Andy and I'm not really paying attention to the ball and the feed comes over the top of the cage, I yell, check, defenseman, whack. So that way, you know, you can't catch it and shoot. 
What are the other goalies yell when Gary or Paul Gators behind the net? They know that they can come over from behind. Probably so help. Never have to worry yeah. I don't worry too much about that. <laughs> have you thought about anybody attempting that on you? I really haven't, and I'm sure I'd be caught very off guard. It's just, you know, you're, you're watching the guy, and you're getting ready for him to come around, and you're getting ready to come here. And all of a sudden, he's up in the air. I just couldn't even imagine it. A couple of years ago, was that totally inconceivable? I think so. I don't think anyone ever thought of it. Have they victimized you in practice? No, they haven't yet. Once in a while, they got Lee a couple times, but they haven't got me yet. But I'm waiting for it. Now, last week, you scored the goal. You went down the length of the field, your first college goal. Uh, did your teammates have an inkling you might try to shoot it as you were coming up field? I think once they see me uh, get rid of the ball and head towards the cage, they probably assume that I'm looking to score one. And so, you know, and I was yelling loud enough, and my stick's big enough to see, so I nope, think they had an idea. Nobody was laughing or anything on the way up field? Uh, no, afterwards they were a little bit. They teased me a little bit, but no, it was fun. How does that rank as a highlight in your career? That's up there, but it's not. Doesn't mean as big as a big, as much as a big win. But uh, no, that was fun. That's something I'll definitely remember. Otherwise, that would have been just another game, I guess. Is there one save in your entire career up to date that stands out most in your mind? I would have to say the, the championship game, the last shot of the game, where they got a nice shot right on the crease that I came up with, and this, you know, we were able to win the championship after that. So that that, that definitely sticks out in my mind. Great. Back in the Carrier Dome at halftime, Syracuse leading Johns Hopkins 10 to 8. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolch, and you know, Dale, I think the fans uh, look at the fact that Gates are seniors and Hopkins doesn't come here too often. They said, this is the one game we have got to see. Well, it looks like uh, every all the regular lacrosse fans came and they brought some of their neighbors. Great crowd tonight. And we've had some great highlights. The man they came to see is not disappointed in the first half. As we check the Coors halftime highlights, you'll see Gary Gate in action at his best. Three goals in this first half. He is the all-time leading goal scorer, and here's the one that did it. Well, Di Tommaso is on him, number 41. He's a great defenseman. He goes over the head. Watch the strength as Gate really brings that stick up, goes behind the head, and just uh, unbelievable. And, uh, of course, Kesselnich couldn't stop it. That captain of three straight goals broke open a 4-4 game, but here is a Wills beating Pat McCabe. And, and he does watch it. Wing. Yeah, he looks to the left wing, and he gets the ball over to Clark. Just a nice example of passing and Clark really got a lot on that ball went by uh, Matt that tied the game at 8-8 Syracuse answered back in a goal by Dan Cahey and then as time wound down in the first half it's Gary Gate yeah uh, Volker was on him Volker went down then they started to slide over and pick him up uh, Dwan and company but he takes another one of those shots and Kessinich didn't even see it till it was coming back out of the cage so those are the Coors halftime highlights Syracuse with a lead of 10 to 8 as we get set for the beginning of the second half we'll run by these stats with you Syracuse winning the faceoffs 11 to 8 and uh, out shooting Johns Hopkins 33 to 23 Syracuse got out early took a lot of shots and in saves Kessinich 10 and uh, Matt Palin with seven man up goals only Hopkins has been able to put one on the board and the clears to Johns Hopkins 10 to 8 as we get set now for the beginning of the third quarter. Second half just beginning a delay of game caused Syracuse a chance on the faceoff and a hard shot by Kelly. Palem got a stick on it. Hopkins will keep it. That was a it was a big mistake. That delay of game can kill you and they had no opportunity to even get the ball and let Hopkins back in it. Save. Matt Palem with a save. Dennis Simmons on for Syracuse. There is the cat and mouse behind the cage. Palem sends the defender down to his feet. And here comes Matt Moore now for the orange. Moore coming across. Moore will look to give it up to Gary Gate. Why not? Syracuse leads at 10 to 8. We're in the opening minute of quarter number three. Burns has had himself a very good first half. Oh, Marichek works in. Oh. Goes low. Tommy Marichek gets the goal. And now Syracuse has again opened up a three goal advantage at 11 to 8. You look at it again as Burns feeds it to Marichek. Sullivan 37 on Marichek, but watch what Marichek does to him. He fakes outside, does an inside dodge. They slide over to help him out, but it's too late. Well, he's uh, one of the Canadian imports who won't be leaving after this year. He's only a sophomore, Tom Marichek. As we come back, Hopkins with a point blank shot. Panetta saved. And now the fast break in the middle. It is Gil Martin. 
giving it back to Polgate. It ricochets out, but a whistle stops play. The bench call, the bench official made the Technical call. Technical hold. 30 second technical. There's the shot. And you're going to see that ball. Well, you don't see it, but a ricochet back. <laughs> Steve Vecchioni is the guilty man for Johns Hopkins. So, so it'll be man up. Syracuse's third man up opportunity. They have not yet capitalized on it. Rodney Dumpson is on with the Gates and Marichek and Greg Burns and Jim Egan. Egan, the man who's behind the cage out of your picture, he's in it now. Feeds up top, behind the back pass, and a bullet by Gary Gates. Uh, assist to his brother. It was a blur by Gary Gates. And now Syracuse is leading 12 to 8, and that's 5 for Gary. Well, they got to tell Kesson, don't worry about it. We were man down. But, geez, Egan just does a great job, draws people to him, makes the pass. Syracuse man up, and as they try to jump on Gates, see, he doesn't need much. <laughs> Excuse me, doesn't need much. He goes up over stick side of Kessinich, who 5'8", a little perhaps short, but a great goalie nonetheless, All-American, and they beat him that time high. Volkler and Kramer. Kramer in there digging, and it is Kirk Pratt who kicks it toward the near side. Official hustles out of the way. It's Sluice on the sideline. Oh, it's off Syracuse. Holbrook got it last, 43, and Hopkins now nope. down four goals. He shouldn't have done that. It was off of Hopkins, but it's easy to say, <laughs> sitting up here. So Syracuse will have to play. A little defense now. John Sheehan, number seven with it. Changing directions and giving it up. To Panetta. Panetta played by Holbrook. They double on him. They send it to Sheehan. The bouncer oh, saved. saved by Palem. Nice job by Matt Palem. One of the country's uh, more underrated goalies. Spino has it. Spino making his move on Dennis Simmons, who pushes him a little bit offline for the shot. Hopkins working it well. Sheehan saved by Palin. He's out of the cage. And he will shield the ball as it goes out of bounds to give it over to Syracuse. Andy Bolin getting some repairs on the sideline. Yeah, he took a stick up on his shoulder. Wills, by the way, was pretty close to that for Hopkins, but he was out of bounds and Matt was in bounds. So Syracuse will get the ball and Hopkins will not challenge until Matt gets up around right where he did there, about the 30 yard line. Coming across is Gil Martin. Tom Gil Martin passing to the left wing. Here is Kay coming in and scoring. Well, they really turned it up a notch after halftime. Homer, New York's Dan Kay gets the goal. He is a senior who has really come into his own. Gil Martin, big kid, 44, dumps it. And watch the move. There's the move on Dwan. And Roll dodge, and he comes back inside and just goes high again. Kesson is not able to stop, and Syracuse has taken four shots, and they've scored four times. Dan so. Kay, he has two Ooh. goals in this game. He's got six out of the year. He is a factor. Procedure call against Syracuse. So Vecchione this time, in effect, wins the face against Pratt. One by penalty. Face Syracuse is, uh, excuse me, Dale, their biggest lead of the game. Yep. Well, Hopkins is not about to fold up. You can believe that. There's a lot of time left. And there's oh. an opportunity on the shot by Adam Wright. Wells keeps it alive. Now Jay Clark, the See rangy the, one the, against Todd Stratton, takes the ball away. He's going to oh, be double. He's going to lose it. He's going to get it back, and Palem has it. Palem to Kramer. He's got Persing to the near side. Persing steps out, and on comes Paul Gate. Ricky Kramer. Kramer draws two defenders. Kramer backs <laughs> it off. Kramer goes to the right hand, the left hand, and close. And Burns couldn't get the stick on the ball. But Burns wins the foot race to the end line. 
Nice hustle. They got a lot of hustle going on. Kesnich also there. He's back in the cage now. Lots of movement. Syracuse kind of spread things out on the crease. Last time Hopkins had the ball down, they were stacking four guys up on the crease. AstroTurf pass. Yeah, the bouncer, Gary Gate, going to the right hand on that shot. Kesnich rose to the opportunity. McNeely pursued by Gate. McNeely on the give to Volker. Gates after him. Look at Gary Gate work defensively. Oh, He's nice down by Clark. He knocked it up ahead. Oh, these guys are unbelievable. The fastest game on two feet, and that ball is rifled wide. These guys are unbelievable. I, really, that was. Uh, he, he saved that in, knocked it into Dumpson, and Dumpson went down, got a shot off behind the back passes. Two Dump years ago, Dale, in opening the 1988 season, Syracuse scored 19 goals against Johns Hopkins. They went undefeated that year, won the national championship. Dumpson with a long shot. Syracuse stacking things up a little on the crease themselves, out a little farther than Hopkins does. Remember, Hopkins has not lost back-to-back -back games since 1982. Greg Burns scores. <laughs> and Syracuse now has 14 goals, and Burns has the hat trick. Watch Burns. He beats McNeely. Watch, he doesn't need much room. And you know, you got body position, but if you can't get stick on stick, boy, they're going to kill you. And Syracuse has been doing some great one on one moves. Six goal lead. There's 10 10 left in the third quarter. And this now represents more goals than Syracuse got against Hopkins in either of last year's two games the opening game of the season and the championship. And now controlling the tempo and controlling the faceoffs. Nice move by Boland coming out of the box, but they're going to lose the ball. Syracuse no. may get it back. They will as Boland comes back to play it off of the cave. Uh, Pratt sprinted like he was going to go out, and the Hopkins man sprinted with him. Then he turned around, came back in, and he couldn't stay with him. They had, in essence, a fast break, but they couldn't do anything with it. Last week, Hopkins surrendered 14 goals against Rutgers in a 14 to 10 loss. Jim Egan. Played by Jim Di Tommaso. Center back. Center back, you hear the goalie explaining where the ball was to his defense. Burns, much more adept one on one player this year. Now Egan and Bolin. Being patient. Played loosely by Dwan. Egan is back. Under nine minutes to go now in the third quarter. Egan against Di Tommaso. Di Tommaso does a good job to take it away. Egan gets it back. Outside to go to Kehi and Bolin. 25 will cut through the crease. Here comes Kehi on the right hand dodge. He's written off the play. Nice job defensively by Hopkins. They're being patient. Syracuse is being patient. Kehi now to Bolin. He stepped out of the box. You won't be allowed to do that in the last two minutes of the game without losing possession. Andy Bolin. Ah. Quick moves. He can stop on a dime. Well, they're waiting for somebody to make a mistake. Oh, a jump shot there by Bonacci, kind of a hook shot. And you know, back up behind is Burns. You mentioned one on one. Syracuse is looking for those matchups. They just think that they've got some better people, and then they one on one they can do things. There's another perhaps one on one move coming. Now there's a double. And Kessinich with a fine save. Gahey was looking for the garbage rebound. Now down the sideline, here comes Dewan. Well, this is the opportunity in the area where nobody picked up earlier in the game. Uh, Di Tommaso looked for a second like that might happen again. The, what you don't see off camera is playing those games, going to the box again, bowling once again, faking whether they're going to go out in a one-on-one -on -one defender trying to fake him out. Here is uh, Gary Kelly getting the step, but Bonacci slows him down. Last week against St. John, Syracuse had a terrific third quarter defensively. And the crowd.
lets you know the Orange are getting it back. It's got to be a little frustrated now. There's still a lot of time left, but the tempo is still Syracuse, and when you get your opportunities, when you're down by six goals, you got to take advantage of them. Time Ball while they in the stick of uh, the defender there. It doesn't take much to change momentum, and Hopkins is just looking for the right thing to do. Now they got to come up with a big play defensively. Paul Gate has it. MVP of the championship game last year against this Hopkins team. Gary Gate. Tommy Marachek. Spinning on Sullivan. Marachek can fire it from so many different angles. Great stick. He's waiting to get doubled, then he's going to look. Syracuse being patient offensively. Screening and in front, dumps it and burns. They're just clogging up the, the alley there. Here is Burns again from behind. He's already got three goals. Burns feeding it to Gary. It's off his stick in the midfield. Stratton tries to keep it. Nice job by across. Stratton. Going back to play to Stratton. He'll redirect it to McCabe. McCabe uh, very good with the stick. Upfield he goes. And it's Burns. Where is it? No. It's That's a Ryder. Matt Ryder. Ryder cutting, getting the feed, or an attempted feed. Still loose on the ground, taken away by Kessinich. Over the head of Di Tommaso, who'll get it back. James Di Tommaso. Yeah, he scored one before. Passing off on the left wing. Now it is Sheehan, saved by Palo. He didn't know where it was. Now he didn't know where it was. He got the stick on it. That's the important thing for Syracuse. Shots for Hopkins slowed down a little bit in this third quarter. Volker goes oh. one on one. Palem went out on him, stick on Palem. stick. Yep. Now Spino picks it up. Hopkins has got to be getting frustrated at this point. They're down 14 to 8. Syracuse has scored six unanswered goals. Sheehan. Lukacs, who got a goal in the first half. Played by Dumpson. Aren't too many people are going to dodge by him. Forced to give it up. Sheehan feeding the crease. Off the stick of Clark. Regained by Sheehan. Clark again. Sheehan one more time. Defender goes down. Sheehan goes high. They're getting some shots. That wasn't a particularly good one, but they're also getting the backup. So Hopkins, you got to be pleased with that at this point. Panetta with it. Panetta played by Holbrook. That's on the side of the cage. Palin has it. Somebody was in the crease. Nope. Got an illegal push. I think that was the call. At any rate, it'll stay Hopkins. Wasn't a personal foul. Hopkins retains possession. They have gone a long time without a score in this game. Spino loses the ball. Syracuse in transition. Gary Gate may get it back. He will. Gary feeds across to Greg Burns. Nice, nice shot, save nice by save. Kessinich. Yep. Nice shot, nice save. Kessinich right down on that low one. It's been 14 minutes without a goal for Johns Hopkins. Nice spin move on the sideline by Lukacs. Now down to four minutes to play in this third quarter. Jeff Wills on the gift to Panetta. Holbrook is on him like a blanket. Save Palo. Lukacs and Kramer. Kramer outruns him. And the crowd did not miss Kramer. that. They, they don't Kramer miss much, here, do they? Appreciation. Kramer out of JD High School, Ricky Kramer. That's out of there's Ricky Kramer. The uh, level of sophistication of the crowd is really amazing in the last couple of years. Kramer trying to dodge down the sideline, lost out the ball. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Nice job. 
That was Clark, the man who got that spectacular goal in the first half for Hopkins. Did a nice job defensively there. Syracuse loses possession. That man's got to be a little frustrated. As we said, a lot of time left. 3.40 in the third quarter. They're down by 6, 14-8. After this back. game, uh, Dale Syracuse is their next couple of games on the road. Sullivan coming in, feeding behind. Panetta, even now in the crease. Stop and go by Kelly. Look at him sliding there. Stratton's playing him. McCabe, Pursing loosely the, there. Pursing the, short, pursing the short stick defender. He's right out there. Kelly going to the Kelly. left. Firing it wide. Marker's down. Hold. That's a hold. Tempers flare momentarily. Let's see if they, they got a call hold. <laughs> Good call, Billy. 30 seconds. There's Persing. You can see the, the helmet move. To be specific. So Syracuse will be man down for 30 seconds. Man up opportunity for one of three, two of three. Johns Hopkins has won 42 national championships. Oh. Smothered by the defense in this man up situation. From behind, Panetta up top. And there's the score. It took them a long, long time. Nearly, what, 15 minutes to get a goal. But Hopkins finally breaks the drought. There's the pass by Wills. Mike Clark, Morrissey rather. is the man who'll score, Dale. Yeah, he, by Wills and then started out there. There's the shot. And down low and it bounced up high on it. Mike Morrissey picks up goal number two. Face-offs, interesting. Syracuse out to 13-10 in that department. Did you see that player jump in front of that shot? How yeah. practice that before the game? It'll be a hold against Hopkins. Syracuse had a new face-off man, Paul Cannon, out there. Well, that they, time. they got it. You know what happens is people get used to your style and things, so they're going to move somebody out. They knew face-off rule with the ball is not in the stick at all. Who's got the ball? Did you see yeah. Gary and Paul touch sticks? Yeah, they're supposed to be. Five yards apart. Gary has it. At least Hopkins thinks so, and he does. Oh, beat. From behind, what will Egan do? Up top to Paul, he cranks. Boy, they oh. love to go high on this guy, don't they? He put a dent in the protective <laughs> padding behind the goalpost. Makes you think twice about your head if you're that man right there, Quint Kessinich, an All-American goalie. Egan on the move against Di Tommaso. Matt Ryder will go behind now, number four. He'll get the pass. He'll send back outside to Paul Gate. We're down to two minutes to play in this third quarter. Gary being checked by Volker way up top. Went off the pick by Paul. Sends to Egan. Intended for oh, Ryder. Nice, nice job, away. Kesselich. Had a man open on the crease. Kesselich stole the ball. Duan. Getting it to midfield where Di Tommaso comes across. Will somebody play him? Yeah, right. That's what uh, Matt Please. Palin's saying. <laughs> somebody pick that guy up. Panetta bothered by Paul Gate. Flag. And a flag. Be another hold on Gary or Paul? Hold, Paul, 30. You see him up the sideline, Panetta, and then there's there's that wrap right there, and that's going to be a hold. Two of four in the man up department. That's pretty good, 50 percent. Ball in play now. Sheehan. Oh. That's she at number seven, having trouble. Clark loses it. Stratton in the middle of the cave. Oh, nice fake. fake. That was a fake. Take it. McCabe against Wills. Pat's killing some time. Nice dip. Odd 
both sides? No. Yes. A slash call coming, a delay. They weren't on sides. On situation. They weren't on sides. Syracuse was not on sides. And there's a slash. Well, this will be interesting. The this offside. Is your department now. Well, simultaneous falls. All right. All right. Walt's going to straighten everybody out here. Well, let's see what we can. <laughs> this is McCabe. There's the fake. <laughs> He's moving on Sheehan. And then you're going to see, there's the slash, I guess. Or right there was the slash. That's a one hand, yeah. Anytime you take that one hand check and you hit anything but stick, you're going to get slashed. And then Syracuse is off sides. So they'll have to serve at least 30 seconds. No matter what happens, somebody will be in the box for 30 seconds. So they'll be even for 30 seconds. And then Syracuse will be man up. If they can get a man in there and uh, control things. So both guys playing down a man. Even and up. in the penalty box, the uh, timekeeper with clocks in either hands keeping track of the penalties. Spreads things out. There's two bodies that usually are out there, aren't out there. Jim Egan now controlling for Syracuse. 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Di Tommaso going step for step with him. They got the ball in the box. That's the time remaining. Holker the all over him. Syracuse wanting to hold on until they get man up. Gary Gay. Maybe. He beat the clock at the end of the first half. Oh, ten one. seconds to go. What a what a hit. The Syracuse have possession in the fourth quarter. No, no score, no shot. That's no it. Shot. Third quarter. Time runs out in this third quarter with Syracuse leading Johns Hopkins 14 to 9. We'll be back in a minute. And now we get set to begin the fourth quarter. With Syracuse leading Johns Hopkins 14 and I. Always nice when you have a coach who's here is longer than some of the players. <laughs> hey, there's some kids. They got a great seat. They've come early for next season's basketball game. Right? Yeah, those are those are good seats for basketball. Up in the Euchre seats. Syracuse gets the ball, no face off because they were had possession and man up. Right close to the goal and in. Is that Burns again? That is Burns. And that is his fourth goal for Greg Burns. Yep. He's made a living against Johns Hopkins. Well, coming in, he had 12 points. Now he's got uh, 16. And there's a nice up, down, up, down, and then he takes Kessnich low. So, yeah, he's had some good success. And Greg Burns has tied his career high with four goals. He set it against Rutgers last year. So goes to 15-9. Yeah. Syracuse is a chance to hit the 20 goal mark against Johns Hopkins. I don't think anybody has done that during the decade of the 80s. Huh. We're just going to walk away there from a little discussion. Guys have been hitting hard, but there's been no cheap shots and people just playing hard lacrosse. There's the ball. That's Dwan right there. Dwan's going to take a little bit of a hit from behind and he got up. A little discussion with Kramer. There's Kelly starting his move against uh, Rob Persing. This year playing with a short stick. Patane against Adam Wright. Wright gets the shot. Panetta closest to it. You see that shot? Matt Palin wasn't screened. You could see that big sweep of the stick, and it gives him time to get set. It's those screen shots when those guys got such a quick release that it's difficult. You can't always get those. Syracuse has played excellent defense. I'm very impressed with them. 
Oh, there's a terrific save by Palem. It was just the shooter against Matt that time. And Palem makes the save. Oh. McCabe oh. took his eye off it. One of the few mistakes you'll see him make. Here's Tierney moving on Kramer. Adam Wright giving it back to Tierney. A little give and go. The drop pass. A minute and ten seconds into this fourth quarter. One on one move by Adam Wright. And there's Palin to play that one. Having an outstanding game is Matt Palin. Syracuse leading at 15 to 9. I think he's gotten a little hotter as the game went on. He's got stay Mark. hot. They're going to put a lot of pressure on him. There's another one by Matt Palin. He is having himself a great game. Simmons almost get blindsided. He got the pass away. Syracuse is getting some new folks in the game now. Todd Stratton, 31. Alton Egg on defense with uh, Holbrook. Bonacci comes on now. Can the Gates ever get tired? I swear they can run up and down, play offense, and with these new rules of taking the big sticks out, now they play defense as intensely as they play well, offense. Well, the new rule keeps the middies on the field more often. Sure does. <laughs> when they're named Gary and Paul Gates. Nice job by Di Tommaso. Yeah, oh, Gary with a nice move to save the ball. The end line. The goalie is out of the cage. Here comes Burns. Gary's still thinking about that air gate move, isn't he? It's never far, I assume, from his mind or the goalies. Here's Kramer. Good defense by Wright. Now we're nearly three minutes into this fourth quarter. Kramer comes in with a right hand. He tried to go <laughs> across the crease on the fly, and he stepped in. You see Kramer, 5'8", 164. When you're 6'2", 205 or 207, doesn't have the same impact. But a nice attempt by Kramer, one-hand shot, semi-air gate. So clear now for Hopkins. Syracuse will put a ride on. Here's little Cordo back in the game for the first time since boy, early oh on. A little Good kid, block. isn't he? Good Good block. Good block. Scott Marr on the give to Panetta. Holbrook is with him. There's the pick. McCabe picks him up. McCabe missed on the gamble, and the goal is scored. As Panetta beats Palo. Nice job, one on one by Panetta. His third, and there's the pick. They picked off Holbrook. They've moved. We thought that, excuse me, McCabe might be on him all the time, but they moved Holbrook to him. A nice dodge, and Palo is just dead meat as far as Panetta's concerned. He did get help in the cage yeah, from Holbrook. Holbrook, but that's. But Panetta beat his old buddy. Yep. McCabe. A lot of time left. This game is not over, believe me. Kirk Pratt not giving up on the faceoff, believe me. He may get it yet. Gary Gate with the vacuum cleaner with a head of steam. Kessinich saves. Gate gets his own rebound for the moment at least. Now Hopkins looking to get some momentum of their own. Bad pass. Hopkins will get it back. Scott Marr on the exchange down there. Was that Keith Gertson? There was a night, another of those whip checks by McCabe. Paul Gate knocked off the ball. Stratton is there though to get Dumpson upfield. Uh, they wanted to settle it down, take a little time out of the out of the game. It's Rodney's had kind of a quiet game. Yeah, Speed Inc. He is fast. Egan oh. intercepted by Volker, but regained by Gary Gee. Does he have a nose for every loose ball? Feeds the crease. Egan nonchalant in it. Was it Egan or was it Paul Gee? It was Paul. He just tried a little backhand shovel. Brian and Taylor. We checked the shots now. Syracuse up to 48. But Hopkins at 43. So they've put up their shout out shot output. 
Look at these guys fake. Marichek oh, feeds Burns. For Burns. The dare to play it before it goes out of bounds is oh. Gary Gay. Marichek went again. They're going to get a hold now. Now this play will continue until a shot is taken or the ball comes free. Yeah, right there. Oh. He took his stick. Egan. <laughs> that was interesting. He got his stick right through the webbing yeah. of Egan. We're going to get a hold on McMahon, 26, I believe. Let's see. Uh, he's pushing him. Uh, you can't do that. He's not near the ball, and he's... <laughs> So that'll be a 30 second penalty in Syracuse. Not especially productive. There's the stick went right through. So he interfered with him and that'll be a man up. Syracuse going in a clockwise direction here. Marichek. Egan rifles it up high. Kessinich with another good save. Boy, he's fast, that kid, Kessinich. Whoa. He's going to take his time now as they're down a man. He's going to be doubled. Di Tommaso waiting for it. Now they get it up to Dewan. Volker may try to get it back to Dewan. No one said he goes to Spino just coming on. In the meantime. I think they're even now. Another half a minute has gone by. They are now. They're even. Sheehan and Lukash. This is Lukash with the ball. Lukash gets it down to Scott Marr and the give to Panetta. Panetta will go one on one. He feeds to the weak side and that, nice shot by uh, Marr and uh, Palem did a good job to take the angle away. He goes down to those knees. That's uh, tough because once you're down there, you can't get back up. There's Panetta again. Again, they took away the angle for the shot. We're down now to 8.58 to go. Got to push him out of there. I said this game is far from over. If Hopkins gets a goal now. Scott Moore, jump shot, not a good one. It was deflected by McCabe. Good defense. Jay Clark has McCabe on him now. He's tenacious, isn't he? Sheehan. Spino is four, but Lukash has it. Ryan Lukash giving ground, resetting the offense. Smothered at the defense. Holbrook and Panetta battle for it. Holbrook can't get a stick on it. Stays in possession of Hopkins. Nice job by Holbrook. Holbrook, junior out of West Genesee High School. He's got Panetta right now. Team's very equal in the shot department. That was a Sheehan shot. Well, they're really, they've been gotten off four or five shots on this little sortie. Doing a good job of taking shots. They're down to 8.08. They got to make up six goals to win this five and tie it. No time this year under the new rules to make changes when the ball goes across the end line. It's a good rule. It speeds the game up. Makes a lot of the players have to go two ways. The way the game was meant to be. Oh, McCabe. He's really bothering Scott Morrow. Can't find the ball. He was looking all over. Great balance by McCabe. Now Gary Gate. Here's the Syracuse transition game. And the crowd rises to their feet in anticipation as dumps it. Syracuse right now is... Uh, Four on six, and now they bring on Kehi and Gilmart. We're midway through this fourth and final quarter, barring overtime. This right now is the biggest margin these teams have had in a game. If it should end this way in quite a few years, Bolin racing out. Egan's gone almost all the way as the the point man on the attack. Push on Sheehan. Gary Gate all alone on the bench. He's getting some air back in his lungs. There's Greg Burns. Dan Kehi. You've got to be able to handle the stick on your right as well as your left. 
This is a game, a sport of this level, it doesn't allow you to be one dimensional or one directional. Oh boy. And you'd better be physical. There are sticks all over those. That was a little high. I thought the helmet was going to come off. You're looking interesting now. Now we're down almost to six minutes to go in the game, and Hopkins is down by five goals. Dave Howland is number 27. Hopkins got to really open up now and start firing. Adam Wright with Gary Kelly. Kelly on a sweep. is on as open. well. That not, shot's wide, and we're down to 5.49 to go. Not a good shot. It was a nice sweep, made a nice move, but was not a hard shot, and it really wasn't on the cage. Jay Clark. Syracuse comes away with it. Gil Martin. Nice, nice rifle pass. pass. Beautiful job. Poland. Poland's got some legs under him. All alone in the middle was Patain. They couldn't find him. Egan gives it up now. Syracuse may want to play keep away here. Brooke Chase. Bonacci coming on. Said chase him. Stay with him. Syracuse in no hurry now. Their clock is their only enemy here, and they know it. Five minutes to go and less. Five goal lead. Down that two minute mark, you're not gonna be able to take that ball out of the box. Poland hanging the stick a little bit. Egan fast. And it's yeah. in. Kessinich lost sight of it and it bounced in. It's a classic uh, feed from behind, look for a cutter, get the ball high and watch him bring it down low. Let's see the what happens. There's the shot, I mean the pass. There's the give back. See him high? And it got a stick on it. Both guys got a stick on it. The defenseman and Kesnich, and it dribbled in. And Bonacci's high shot gives goal number 16 to Syracuse. Dale, our next game, by the way, here in the Dome will be April 14th. Hobart, the Division Three champions with a new coach. <laughs> Currently in the place they usually are, number one. And that'll also be the day of the spring football game here in the Dome. So it'll be two for the price of one. Hmm. Di Tommaso putting some aluminum on Egan as Bowling back in. Four minutes to go. Did we get an official uh, crowd count? No, I don't think we did. Let's give him one, Dave. <laughs> Syracuse is going to keep it. Hopkins, I think, is yelling for a timeout. Well, Syracuse wanted a timeout. And we will have a timeout with exactly four minutes remaining here in the Carrier Dome. Here we go. Whoa. Big time. 18,000. 244, was it? That's correct. And this will be the next one here on the Dome. Hobart and Syracuse. You'll see it uh, Sunday, April 15th. Well, I guess you get an extra day to do your income tax. That's right. Because we've got the game on the 15th. <laughs> Right well, now, it's a six-goal lead with exactly four minutes left to go. And don't forget, when the game is over, we'll select our Pepsi player of the game. And we'd always like to hear from you. We got a nice car this week from a um, Syracuse lacrosse fan in the area with a correct pronunciation of Matt Ryder. Yeah, or Ritter. <laughs> no, it's Ryder. That's right. That's the address. Drop us a line. Hope to hear from you. Four minutes to go. Coach Zimmerman. Syracuse sends out Nick Boynton now on the attack. He's got to be a little frustrated, but um, 
I, I think his team played well in spurts. This is a very talented Syracuse team. There's no doubt about it. And that's a talented Blue Jay team. But there's a lot of time left in the season. I think the intensity is <laughs> cranked up a little bit, maybe because of that loss to Rutgers. 14-10. Bolin breaks the double team by Kesinich and Dwan. By the way, Hopkins has to go to Virginia next week. Bonacci. Joel Bonacci. Makes it a 17-10 game. Bonacci, one of those midfielders who fits in the spots, gets the pass from Boland. Diving attempt to stop, but too late by McNeely and Syracuse. Puts up goal 17. We're going to have a timeout taken by Johns Hopkins now. With 3.48 to go, they want to uh, keep their composure. This game may have escaped them. They may be suffering their first back to back losses since 1982, but like you say, Dale, there's uh, much more of this season still to come. Well, they got a lot of time to go. It'll be interesting to see. They've got. Uh, that loss to Rutgers, yeah, I don't want to dwell on that, but as I said, that was a real, a real shocker. And um, when you've got <clears throat> the rest that they've got to play in the schedule that they play, it's very difficult uh, now with a loss to Syracuse. They've got to be saying, whoa, what are we going to do? They've played very, very well. But they are on the short end of a 17-10 game. 348 left. The back of that placard says John Who. There it is. Left the S out, but I think the message is understood. Greg Burns with Roy Simmons. Roy has his hand around one of the candidates for the Pepsi Player of the Game Award. Great support here for Syracuse lacrosse. 18,000 in the dome tonight. They were expecting last week they said 12. Yeah. Well, with an opponent like Hopkins, it's going to get everybody, and they did. I wouldn't be surprised to see an even bigger crowd for the combination Hobart, Hobart spring football Hobart game. Hobart brings a lot of people down. I had a chance to watch a little bit of football practice day before this game was played and I'll tell you it's going to be a battle as to who quarterback Syracuse Marvin Graves a definite contender along with uh, McDonald and Bill Shaw flag down here. Yeah, that's it. So it'll be a man up situation now for Johns Hopkins with three minutes and 17 seconds left. Remember that spring football game a few years ago Dale we said during the game you know the quarterback who looked the best to us was uh, this guy nobody's ever heard of right. Mark McDonald Mark McDonald that's right <laughs> yeah that, that will be interesting they got a lot of athletes tailback spot some freshman possibilities and when you team that up with uh, Hobart and Syracuse and lacrosse it's a great combination right now man up opportunity for Hopkins, their sixth. They oh. Feed the crease, but they can't get a shot. And when you think about football, basketball, and lacrosse, as I said last week, look at all the seniors that are departing the scene. Has there ever been a, a year when so many great athletes? You know, that man right left there. Once, and that's one of them. Yeah, you know what he told me? He says, I'm really kind of glad I'm, I'm not going to be around after Gary and Paul leave. <laughs> Look at Paul. Like a knife through butter, right? That's a right. knife through butter. Here's Gary. I guess we've run out of superlatives. What, do you, what can you say? What do we got here? That was an extra ball on the field. Ah, that could confuse things. Now it's straightened out. <laughs> got away from one of the ball boys. 
glad they put equipment on those kids. Here comes Gary. Is he going up? Went behind the back. Push. Yeah. You notice those guys, Dave, you know how many times they get hit and they never seem to lose their cool? Right now, Egan's going to get the ball. We have two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Jim Egan here in closing minutes of the game. It's a little bit anticlimactic as he toes the end line. Take, took McNeely way out. Gary gives it up and he heads to the side. Two line. minutes. Matt Palum says two minutes to let them know. Oh. Bill Martin down, still with it. Oh. Aaron pass for Egan. Two minutes. Jason Picorni is in the game, number 16. Bill Martin limping a little bit. There's a big kid, 6'1, 203, out of Northport, Long Island. So this game was tied at eight apiece. And Syracuse broken wide open with six unanswered goals. It hasn't been much of a contest since. The third quarter, all Syracuse. Pale him out. Yep. Oh. Who's guarding a cage? It's uh, a cave. A cave was in there. Minute and a half to go. And this crowd will rise to their feet and start cheering like the end of a fight. The cave with a hook feed to Gilmart. Flag down on ahead. Good call. Penalty nine Hopkins. Number 32, round first, one minute slash. One minute slash. Jimmy O'Hara calls a late penalty, but a one that was obviously there. Syracuse have to, <clears throat> excuse me, keep in the box. And they put the clock back in motion now with a minute and 10 seconds to go. Gary Gate with five goals in the game. Greg Burns with four. Oh, took a kind of a shot. Oh. Jason Picorni rifle one at Kessinich. Marichick fan on the rebound. Somehow it's in. Well, I'll figure this one out in a minute. Let's see if we can see what happened. Thank goodness we have the replay because I couldn't tell. Well, there was a lot of people on the crease. There was one shot. Kessinger was down. Well. That's the corny yeah, shot. You know, there, now, see, he's got the rebound, but he loses it. Now, Marrakech tries to put it in. Now the ball's still out. Now when they see that down and they see those white jerseys, they start saying, clear out the crease. Now watch what happens. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> and there's the ball just <laughs> dribbles in. Somebody's foot gave it the impetus. Might be Marrakech. We'll wait till the official call. I have no idea. No. And if they don't have benefit of the replay, how are they going to know? And if they don't, they'll give it to the crease attack man, whoever he is. That's Paul Gate. His day is done. Half a minute to go. Johns Hopkins will leave the dome for the second time on the short end of a score. This one was really no contest after the uh, third quarter began. It really did come out in that third quarter and just, whoo, just bang, bang, bang. Well, if we get a chance to talk to somebody after the game, we'll ask him exactly what was that sermon at halftime. Egan's going to lose it. No, he gets it back. He's decked. Catching it, trying to push. Yeah. Take that. All right, 11 seconds to go. Kessnich has had 21 saves. And the cage was open for a moment. They count it down, and that is it. <laughs> Syracuse, Roy Simmons, John Desco have defeated Johns Hopkins to extend a long home winning streak. 
and solidify their hold as the nation's top Division I lacrosse team. Syracuse wins it 18 to 10. And we'll be back with our selection of the Pepsi player of the game and post game interviews right after this. Back in the Carrier Dome where Syracuse has defeated Johns Hopkins 18 to 10. It was a suffocating defense uh, by Syracuse in that third quarter. And as we go down to the field level now, we've got uh, Pat McCabe with us. Uh, Pat, what was, the, what was the talk that uh, Roy Simmons and company uh, gave you guys at halftime because the third quarter is a different story? Uh, I really don't know. We just said a lot of things that we were doing wrong. You know, we were uh, weren't taking good shots at some points and we were being a little foolish on defense. So we wanted to, you know, control the tempo a little bit more and get our run game going so we can, you know, take advantage of them. One of the things I noticed uh, early, they had a couple of uh, fast breaks, unsettled situations, but as far as a settled defense, you guys did a great job of shutting them down. What was the coming into the game? What did you plan to do? You know, we planned to put Eric Colbrook on Mappanetta, you know, with a big score, and he, he wanted to shut him down, and he did a real good job of that through the whole game. And, uh, you know, some of the big things were that, you know, we were patient. We didn't go for the big check a lot of times. I made a couple mistakes on that area, but uh, other than that, you know, we were real patient, and uh, we didn't weren't foolish. And, you know, we communicated well, and that was a big thing, communication. We talked to each other. We didn't let a lot of foolish goals go by, so, you know, things worked out pretty well. You ended up on Panetta in a couple of uh, changes there. He got, he got you that one time, didn't he? Yeah, he got me pretty good. You know, <laughs> it, it happens, and uh, I'm not really embarrassed. Not, Matt's a great player, so if he beats you, you're not, not to be ashamed of. Oh, absolutely. That was, uh, it's a tough move. They're a very tough tough club. I would say that uh, you guys had a lot of speed, both defensively and offensively. I was amazed at how quick you guys got that ball back up the field. You know, that's a part of our game. That's the biggest part of our game is the transition. You know, we get the ball on defense, try to change the tempo. You know, they slow it down. Ball gets on the floor, we pick it up and run with it so we can take advantage and get to the field. Pat, you made one great fake of a behind-the-back pass, and, and then you kept it. I think we're going to get a look at it right here. Can you see it? Yeah, I got it. There was the fake. Hey, it fell for it. I didn't <laughs> think they did, really. But, uh, I, you know, we just wanted to get the ball out of the zone. I should have gone back to Matt on that play. I was a little stupid, but... It worked out, so I got no complaints. How does it feel to beat a team like Hopkins so convincingly? Uh, it feels real good. You know, right now I'm real tired and all, but you know, emotionally and physically, it makes you feel good that you can run with a team like this, with their caliber, and come out on top. All right, congratulations to Pat McCabe, uh, anchor of the Syracuse defense, as they defeated uh, Johns Hopkins 18 to 10. Again, the third quarter was the big quarter in this game for uh, Syracuse. It was a 10 to 8 game at the half and Syracuse in that third quarter just uh, completely blew away Johns Hopkins. All right, time now to meet our selection of the Pepsi player of the game. And it is uh, James Will DeWitt graduate Greg Burns who tied his career high with four goals in this one. You know, Greg, coming in, I was looking at the stats that they sent out at Sports Information. I was looking at your uh, your career against Hopkins. I said, he's got 12 points against these guys coming in the game. And I said to Dave, I, I said, I wonder if he's going to have a big game today. And you did have a good one today. Yeah, I wanted to have a big game. I, first game I ever played in my life was against Hopkins right here in the Dome, and the first time I got the ball, I think I, I scored. I, I don't think it was on Quinn Cousins, but it was probably one of the most exciting moments of my career here. So I wanted to go out with a, a good game, and so I worked real hard in practice, and everything paid off. Matt, we're, uh, Greg, we're going to get a look now at your goal, the uh, 15th goal for Syracuse. This is the up-down, up-down fake. Why don't you take us through this play? Well, here Jim's just most, mainly looking to Gary and Paul, but they were overplaying him, so I was on the back side, and he passed it to me, and I just, you know, respected Quinn, so I had to give him a quick pump fake high and then get him low. Early in the game, we saw you go one-on-one -on -one a lot more often. In fact, this year we've seen a lot more one-on-one. -on -one. Are you physically stronger and more comfortable in that role? Yeah, I'd have to say, you know, I lost, you know, a few pounds this year, and, like, after losing Zilberti, we don't really have a pure feeder, so I figured that, I, you know, I was going to have to take the burden off Tom and uh, Jim. So, you know, I moved behind a little bit, and you know, I play in the crease a little bit, and I played behind in high school, so I'm fairly comfortable behind there. You guys seem to go high a lot on Kessinich. Was that uh, by design, or was that just uh, taking what you thought you could get? Yeah, I think it's for, you know, taking what you can get. I don't know. We scored high on most of the goals last year in the championship, but, you know, I don't think the guys on our team respect any goal. Everyone just <laughs> fires away. <laughs> Good point. Greg Burns uh, on a night when uh, Gary Gate becomes the all-time leading goal scorer at Syracuse and gets five in the game. Uh, you beat him out as our Pepsi player of the game. Uh, yeah, that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Congratulations. Burns. Okay. Syracuse wins it 18 to 10. And uh, our next action featuring the Orange Men and Lacrosse will be here in the Dome against Hobart. The Battle of the Champions, Division One and Division Three. We'll see it on Sunday, April 15th. There again is your final score. 
It wasn't close. 18 to 10, Syracuse over Hopkins. Today's game was produced and directed by Frank Rafka. The coordinating producer is Bob Jubinville. Our remote supervisor, Tony Vidala. Speaking for Dale Drypolter, this is Dave Cohen thanking you for joining us and reminding you to be with us for Syracuse Lacrosse, the Orange Men of the Statesman of Hobart on April the 15th. This has been a presentation of Super Sports.